Hello everyone. Uh, I want to say uh, I want to thank everyone for uh, joining me this morning. Uh, I first of all I want to give God thanks for allowing us to to live another day. I know things are are different this morning. Uh, a lot of church houses are empty with people. Uh, but that doesn't mean we still can't have church. You see. Uh, this is just a church house, but we are the church. And, you know, it's, it's definitely out of my comfort zone to be here this morning and not, not see my family and my friends. But I know you're there. And I know God is in control. And like Sister Sandy says, this too shall pass. That this virus, this sickness, it's going to pass. But the one thing that will stand forever is the Word of God. And I thank God that He has us in the palm of His hands. And if you're with me this morning, I hope and pray that you get just as much out of watching this live as what you do when you're in the church house. Because you see, my God that I serve, the God that you serve, He's not limited to these walls. But the God we serve is bigger He's bigger than anything we could ever imagine. See, God is bigger than this church house. He's bigger than any church house that was ever made. You cannot contain God in the walls. You see, we can serve God no matter where we're at. And I thank God. I thank God with all my heart that He loves me, that He cares for me, that He cares for you, that He loves you, that He watches over each and every one of us. No matter what may come our way, God is with us. And I praise Him for all that He does. And at this time, I would like to go to the Lord in prayer. Dear most kind, precious Heavenly Father, I thank You, O God. Father, I know that You're in control and we give You glory. Father, there's so many that would love to be in Your church house this morning, in Your house to worship You. But God, due to the sicknesses that's going on in this world, we're trying to do what's best for one another and allow one another to heal, allow one another to get better so that we can come to your house once again. But Father, we don't have to cease praising your name. We don't have to quit giving you praise. We don't have to quit worshiping you, oh God, for you're still God. And Lord, we thank you for giving us this opportunity. And Lord, I thank you for all that you do for each and every one of us. You know all those that are sick. You know all those that are afflicted. God, I pray that you would be with them. God, you know those, Lord, that, are, that have lost a loved one or a family member. Lord, I pray that you would comfort them in a way that only you can. Father, I praise you. Lord, I stand here so unworthy, so undeserving, God. But Lord, I praise you for your love. I feel your Holy Spirit this morning, God. And I thank you, God, that no matter what we, what we face, that you're there and that you will see us through it. Lord, I ask God that you would have your complete will to be done in this service. That you would touch each and every one. That, Father, they will hear your voice come out of my mouth. God, that they'll see you living inside me. Lord, let them feel you, God, wherever they may be right now, wherever they're watching. God, that they would feel your Holy Spirit. That they would feel your arms wrap around them, God. And that, Father, that they will praise you just as much wherever they're at right now as what they would even in the church house. God, I ask, Father, that you bless each and every one. In the mighty name of your Son, Jesus, we ask and we pray. Amen. Like I said, I, I do want to thank each and every one of you. And uh, I want to do a few songs before I get into the preaching. But uh, let's remember, you know, we still have some church members that are sick. You know, we're praying for you. And uh, again, I, I want to thank everyone for all the support. For, for being there, for praying. Prayer means everything. And I thank you so, so much. And don't ever forget, church, we are the church. It's not the church house. Just because the doors are closed doesn't mean the church is closed. You are not a God created by human hands. You are not a God dependent on any mortal man. You are not a God in need of anything we can give by your plan. 
that's just the way it is. You are not a God created by human hands. You are not a God dependent on any mortal man. You are not a God in need of anything we can give by your plan. That's just the way it is. You are God alone from before time began. You are on your throne. You are God alone. And right now, in the good times and bad, you are on your throne. You are God. God whose power none can contend. You're the only God whose name and praise will never end. You're the only God who's worthy of everything we can give. You are God and that's just the way it is. You know, when we go through tough times, when we go through troubles and trials, and it seems like that uh, all hell is broke loose against us and we have nowhere to turn, and, and it seems like that the enemy is going to overtake us, that's when God comes to our rescue. That's when the Lord comes and He protects us and He shows us that He loves us. He shows us that we have nothing to fear because He's right there. Even when we don't see Him, He's right there. There I was, empty-handed, crying out from the pit of my despair. There you were, in the shadows, holding out your head, you met me there. And now, where would I be? Without you, where would I be? Jesus, you were the voice in the desert, calling me out in the dead of night, fighting my battles for me. You were my rescue story, you lifted me up from the ashes. 
ashes You carry my soul from death to life Bringing me from glory to glory You are my rescue story This next one I'm gonna do. You know, I we all go through some tough times and and sometimes we just want to give up and it's sometimes we we feel like what's the use of what's the use of holding on? What's the use of of, of continuing on? Because it seems like that no matter how hard we try, no matter what we do, it seems like that we can't win for losing. And I know there's been many of us that's that's probably felt felt that way more than once this week. You know, I don't know what it is you're going through, but I do know that God can take you through it. And if you just hold on and trust God and never, never let go of His hand, amen, He'll take you through it. You ask me how it is that I'm still standing Wonder how I made it through the storm. I can't boast of any special powers. There's no secret. I just held on. I held on. I've got blessings that 
If I was going to make it But while I was wondering I just kept holding on And I held on Till the storm was over I don't claim to be a hero I don't have all the answers I have Not because I'm strong, I just hit on. All you gotta do is hold on to Him. No matter how bad things look, if you just hold on to the Master, He looked bad for Peter when he began to sink on the water. All he had to do was cry out to Jesus. And Jesus reached out his hand and Peter grabbed a hold and held on. The woman with the issue of blood, she spent all she had. She was dying. But then she just touched the hem of his garment. And she held on. You see, Jesus will never let you down. He'll never leave you and he'll never forsake you. But all you got to do, church, is just reach out wherever you're at. And hold on to him. And I held on till the storm was over. I don't claim to be a hero. I don't have all the answers. I held on till the storm was over. It's not because I'm good. Not because I'm great, not because I'm strong. I am all. I held all. My joy's coming in the morning, Lord. So I'm going to hold on. No matter what may come my way, I'll keep holding on, oh, to you, Lord. No matter how big my enemy may seem to be, I'll hold on, hold on to you, Lord. You're bigger than any sickness or disease. So I'm going to hold on. Oh, I'll hold on. Hey, 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 hey. I held on.
All your sorrow and your sadness There's a Savior at He calls Bring it all to the table Do one more and we'll get in the Word unless the Lord changes things on me. He, he, he's been known to do that quite a bit. But I'm glad that He's in control and I'm not. Amen. Hope everyone's enjoying it so far. I've never really done this song with music, but I'm going to try it. Amen. You've been my friend for so long. You were right, and I was wrong. I can't repay you all the love you've given me. You were my friend when no one cared. I was alone, but you were there. Lord, you're the best thing that's ever happened. Sing it with me if you would. I owe it all to you, Lord. All I have is you, Lord. Take my life and make it what you'd have it be. For I'm your child and you're my father. I'm the clay. And you're the potter, Lord, you're the best thing that's ever happened to me. Yes, you're the best thing that's ever happened to me. I believe I want to do one more. I, we got to do this.
school, another mile. That the church will triumph. Oh, oh, oh. Ain't no home in a little while. It'll be worth it after all. And from 
time if you have your Bibles with you I'm going to ask you to turn with me to the book of Psalms book of Psalms chapter 91 I'll give you time to get there and again I want to thank everybody that is that is joined in with us uh, those of you that's that stuck with us I hope you're enjoying it those of you if you just come on for the first time I hope that you get something out of this I hope that you feel the presence of God amen and I just, I just want you to know that God is just as big in your home as what He is in a church house. Amen. God, God is not limited to His power. Amen. That God, the God that I serve is an all-seeing, all-knowing, all-powerful God. And that even though that maybe things are a little different this morning, God is not different. God changes not. God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Hallelujah. See, God ain't up there and surprised about what all's going on. God ain't up there scratching His head wondering what He's going to do about this virus. Because the thing is, is that God is the cure for the virus. Amen. See, His Son Jesus done took, took the healing. He done gave us the healing over 2,000 years ago. Amen. When He bore the stripes on His back. He bore the stripes for our healing church. And it's not in the doctors. Your healing's not in the medicine. Your healing is in Jesus. So if you have your Bibles, I would ask you that you turn to the book of Psalm chapter 91. <laughs> Just bear with me. I believe that we need to hear this. Amen. I've asked God, Lord, what is it do you want me to, to preach? Now, I'll, I'll go ahead and let you all know right now that I am definitely out of my comfort zone. I'm not internet savvy. I've got people that do that for me here at church when we do our services, and I commend them so much. You know, my mother, Linda Pate, my stepdad, Mike Pate, Edith Hinkle, and so many others that do this. And I've got people that run sound for me. Uh, Brother Joe Ogle and Sister Jamie O'Brien, they do wonderful. And I miss my group, you know, my, my wife, Leanne, and, and my three boys, and, and Joe. And, you know, I miss all the congregation that's out here that I could look at and see your faces and knowing that, you know, you're getting something out of the service and praising God. But I know and believe with all my heart that you're still where you're at right now. You're still praising God. And that's 
you got your hands lifted up and you're giving God the glory because God deserves all the glory and He deserves all the praise. Amen. And He deserves it all. Even in the bad times, God deserves all the praise. Even in the good times, God deserves all the praise. We should praise God for He's the God in the valley. He's the God in the mountain. We need to praise God when the times are rough and when the times are smooth, when the times are bad and when the times are good. We should not change how we praise God. He deserves all praise. So if you have your Bibles, Psalms chapter 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers and under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Woo, hallelujah. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Woo! Right there, church. We're going to read that again. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Hallelujah. For that tells me right there that God has got you in the palm of His hand. For He shall give His angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall, oh hallelujah, they shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. I thank God that he knows my name. Hallelujah. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Whoo, hallelujah. I want to go back to verse 10 again. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Hallelujah. See, church, the problem today is that people are living in fear. They're living in a state of panic because of all the sickness that's going on in the world. They're concentrating more on the sickness instead of concentrating on God. They're looking more at their problem instead of looking at the answer. Amen. But see, if you have God, if you got Jesus in your heart, and you believe what His Word says. There's no sick, no plague going to come nigh thy dwelling. Who is able to pluck you out of His hand? There's no one big enough. There's no one bad enough to pluck you out of God's hand. Hallelujah. Oh, but you know, I'll tell you why. That the reason that the world is going through what it's going through today. And I'll be honest with you. I don't sugarcoat nothing. Amen. The thing is, is that the, the, the world has turned away from God. Amen. What we need to do if you want to find peace, if you want to see things get better, then the world needs to turn back to God instead of turning to the world. Amen. The world needs to turn back to God instead of turning toward man. Amen. The world needs to see Seek the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Then all these other things shall be added unto you. Second Chronicles 7 and 14 says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble them and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I'll forgive them of their sin and I will heal their land. You've got to turn around. You've got to get back to God. But see, people, they don't want to see it that way. People don't want to look at it that way. You know, here it's been total chaos this past few weeks. 
People rushing to the stores and they're trying to gather up all the supplies. They're trying to hoard up everything they can hoard up. They're trying to just, just take it all in and not thinking about their neighbor down the road. They're not thinking about the ones that's sick. They're getting stingy, amen. And they want to take it all in just because somebody said there's a virus out there. Just because there's a sickness out there. And they're trying to prepare for the sickness. But yet we tell them that Jesus is coming soon. And they will prepare their soul to meet an almighty and just God. We have problems. There's problems in the world. That's exactly church. I, I, that's exactly why that the world's in the shape it's in today. We need to turn back to God. But people don't want to help their brother. They want to hoard everything up. The Bible says if you see your brother in need and you shut up your bowels of compassion, then how dwell the love of God in you? Woo! You see, the thing that's going on is that people don't realize that Jesus is coming back. They don't, they've heard it all their life. They've heard it and heard it all their life. Oh, well, I've heard it all my life and i got plenty of time. And some of them probably don't believe in it. I've heard it from my grandpa. I've heard it from my great-grandpa. I've heard it from the people back in the old days. Well, the thing is, is that Jesus did come back after them. And he might, you might not see him on the cloud coming back, but he may call your name next. You may be the next one that leaves this earth, whether it be by a virus, whether it be by a car accident, you're going to leave this world one way or another. See, you might get the virus and you might not get the virus. You might get sick, you might not get sick. But the one thing I can guarantee you, you are going to leave this world and you are going to stand before an almighty and just God. You will, you will bow down. You will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Oh, some people just don't believe in that. Well, I'll tell you what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24, down at about the 44th verse. He said, Therefore be ye ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. He's going to come when you think not, when you least expect it. Amen. This virus that come about, hallelujah, they wasn't looking for the virus. They wasn't expecting a pandemic. But here it is. But just as sure as there's a virus out there, there's a just God in heaven. Just just as sure as there's a heaven, there's a hell. Just as sure as there's a place of torment, there's a place of paradise. But it's up to you. See, you've got to be ready. Hallelujah. See, people are so consumed by fear that they seem to have lost all common sense. All because of fear. They can't even think rational. They can't even act civil anymore. They want to act like a pack of wild animals. All because of fear. All because that fear has consumed them. All because that they've gotten so afraid they forgot who brought them through the tough times. They've forgotten who brought them through all the troubles and the trials. They forgot who done the impossible. That they took the impossible possible made it possible they forgot the one that was with them in the midnight hour they forgot about the one that healed them when the doctor said there was no hope they forgot about the one that saved their soul when you didn't think you could be saved they forgot about the one that loved you when you weren't lovable they forgot about the one that forgave you when you was unforgivable they forgot they're so consumed by fear. That's all that they're looking at right now is fear, fear, fear. 2 Timothy 1 and 7 says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. You see, Fear is all it is is a bunch of thoughts that the enemy has planted in your head. And you've taken and you have fed those fears with all kinds of other thoughts. And all it is is lies. Zach Williams sings a song, Fear is a liar. That could never more be right. Fear is a liar. I have the answer to fear. And that's Jesus. I'm not going to fear. Do you fear the coronavirus? Absolutely not. 
I do not fear the coronavirus. I don't fear, fear the sickness. I don't fear cancer. I don't fear any of it because I know whom I serve. No, I don't want to catch it. Yes, I'm trying to use wisdom and try to watch and how not to get around certain things. But you know God is in control. Now there's pastors, hallelujah. I'm telling you, that they're out there and they're trying their best to preach to their flock and people don't want to listen to them. See, people has, fear has caused people to lose their focus on their answer. Instead, they're focusing more on their problem. See, I want to let you know this, church. It's, you need to quit telling God how big your problem is and start speaking to your problem. You need to start telling your problem how big your God is. God is bigger than any problem you have. God is bigger. God is bigger than anything you could ever imagine. How big is He in your life? That's the question. How big is God in your life? Is He so big that you put your trust in Him? We have to trust God. Oh, but listen... The people say this virus is big. Well, my God is bigger. They say this virus can kill. Well, guess what? My God can heal. They say this virus is contagious. And it spreads easily. Well, so does the Holy Ghost and fire, church. I want to let you know that the Holy Ghost and fire it ought to spread more and more quickly than what the virus does. And I believe there's some people out there right now that's a shouting. I believe there's some people out there right now thanking God for being with them. I believe there's some people out there right now that saying, God, I thank you in the bad times and I thank you in the good. God, I know you're with me and you're going to see me through. Lord, may I walk to the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. God. God. He's the answer. See, people are so caught up in this fear, in this virus. What happened to the people that claim to be Christians? What happened to those faith believers? What happened to those people that says, I trust God? What happened to those people that said, I will fear no evil? What happened to the people that said they was going to take a stand for God? What happened? What happened? I understand that the churches have to be, the church doors have to be closed right now. I totally agree with it. Just so that people will get will get better, so that they don't carry sicknesses back and forth. I totally get that. See, God wants us to use wisdom in all things. God wants us to be wise in things. Well, Brother Nick, I don't just agree with that. Well, I'll give you an analogy. You know, there's this man, he's a paratrooper, and he flies a plane, and he's a Christian, amen. And he's up in the plane. He loves God, but God expects that man to use enough wisdom to take a parachute with him when he jumps out of the plane. Amen. If he don't take a parachute and he jumps out of the plane and dies, it's his own fault. God gave you a brain and you need to use it. Amen. You got to use wisdom. You got to use wisdom. This doesn't mean that the church will forevermore be shut. Absolutely not. And I will let you know this right here and right now. I'm giving them a chance. I'm giving them a chance. Oh, mark this down. I'm giving them a chance that they can get take this sickness and get it taken care of. That people can get better. But you can mark my words as the old saying by Tracky. You can mark my words that this ain't going to go on forever. Because if they keep him hauling around and they don't want us to have to, I will have church. Amen. The Lord will be open because they had their chance and they didn't fix it. But I know somebody who can fix it. Amen. Yeah. I'm definitely out of my comfort zone. Woo! This is the first time that I've ever preached to a phone. I've been on a hill. I've preached to trees. I've preached to animals. I've preached to people and I've preached to myself. But boy, I'm never... Preach to a phone. Well, today's the day. Maybe my phone will work even better. Maybe it'll get better service, say man, after it's all said and done. Hallelujah. You see, Jesus already told us that things were going to come our way. He already told us that we were going to go through some hard times. See, Jesus told us in John chapter 16 and verse 33, He said, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcame the world. Hallelujah. He's overcame the world. Jesus said this. 
In John chapter 14, 1 through 3. Let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And I go to prepare a place. And if I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. You see, church, He has given us hope. Amen. He has given us hope. Hallelujah. And this is just a trial. This is just a test. Amen. God wants to see how many people is willing to praise Him just as hard in their living room as what they do in the church house. You see, the problem is, is that there's people not living the life of a Christian in their homes like they say they are in the church house. But now's the time, amen. Now's the time. He says in the Word, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You've got to give God your everything. You see, as pastors, we have to make difficult decisions. We make decisions that not everybody is going to agree with. We must seek God's will and try to do the best we can to do what's best for our congregation. There's pastors right now that's being ridiculed for having to close their church doors. And there's pastors right now that's being ridiculed for trying to keep their church doors open. And I want to go ahead and say this. The truth is, some of the ones that's doing the ridiculing is some of the ones that's... that's Talking bad about the pastor. That they're giving the pastor a hard time for having his doors closed because they say they want to go to church. But yet when the church doors are open, you never see them in the church house. Amen. It seems like they just want something to gripe about. They want something to complain about. They just want to be the center of attention. Well, I want you to know this, church. If you can't have church at home, then how can you have church in a church house? Amen. Because these are just the walls. Amen. The God that I serve, He lives in me, the God that you serve lives in you. You've got to praise Him wherever you're at. You should be able to praise God when you're walking in the middle of Walmart. Amen. And you can lift up your hands and you can say glory, hallelujah. God, if nobody else will proclaim your name, I'll stand up and I'll say I'm proud to be a Christian. I thank God that I'm a child of God. I'm a winner either way, God. And I thank you for salvation. See, church, I thank God that though our doors to the church, the doors to this church house are temporarily closed. And I'm going to stress that, temporarily closed. I can still praise my God. And I believe, I believe that when we're able to get back together in the house of God, I believe you'll see such a fire, such a Holy Ghost and fire in all the church houses. I believe you'll see a revival bust loose in every place because people are so hungry. They're so, they're so just bound up and they've got to let something go. They've been impregnated with the Holy Ghost and fire and they've got to bust out of their houses and tell somebody about Jesus and they can't wait to get to the house of God. They can't wait to lift up their hands. They can't wait to shout glory hallelujah. They can't wait to run to an altar. They can't wait to get down to a place called Calvary. They can't wait to grab a hold of that old rugged cross. They can't wait hallelujah. I can't wait. Well, you know what? Let's start now. You need to be geared up now. You got to be prepared now. Jesus is coming back. Hallelujah. I'm not worried about the sickness. I'm not worried about the diseases. I'm worried about the souls that are lost. Amen. And they're dying and going to hell. That's what we need to be worried about. Not all the sickness and disease. We need to worry about the ones that are dying lost. That's what we need to we need it. You've got loved ones that's dying lost and you're worried about a sickness. You've got family members that's out there and making their bed in hell and you're worried about a sickness. Oh, church. See, the Bible that I read, the God that I serve, when I leave this world, I won't have to worry about a sickness no more. There'll be no sorrow there. No more burdens to bear. No more sickness. No more pain. No more parting over there. And forever I will be 
with the one who died for me. What a day, glorious day that we be. See, I don't care, hallelujah, uh, what the sickness may look like. I don't care how bad they say it is. I'm covered by the blood, amen. I've got the blood of Jesus applied, hallelujah. When the death angel come around the children of Israel, Moses told them to apply the blood above the doorposts, amen. The question is, do you have the blood applied, amen? I thank God that when I applied the blood, hallelujah, rage cannot wash it away. A storm cannot get rid of the blood. I thank God that I'm covered. Woo! I'm covered by the blood, church. I'm covered by the blood. Woo! Hallelujah. If the blood can wash away your sin, the blood can heal the sick. If the blood can heal the sick, the blood can heal the ones that are afflicted. If the blood can heal the afflicted, the blood can raise the dead. If the blood can raise the dead, the blood can save you. That's the answer. Oh, that's the answer. I should be able to praise God just as much at home as I do in a church house. See, just because that the church house doors are shut, it doesn't mean that the church is shut. Well, brother Nick, what do you mean? What do you mean, pastor? What are you talking about? See, Jesus says, if you go over in the book of John in chapter 10 and about the ninth verse, he said, I am the door. See, Jesus said, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pastor. See, Jesus is the door to the church. It's not those doors that you open up and you take a handle and walk into a building. Jesus said, I am the door. He's the door, church. And if you will not it will be open. Whew. Whew. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling the Lord. See, I, know, I come into this thing. Yeah, I admit I was nervous. And I said, God, you know, it's my job. Lord, when the people can't come, when the people can't come, God, I'll come out of my comfort zone. I'll do whatever it is that I need to do to get the word out to them, Lord. Lord, it's not only my job, but that's what you require of me. And God, it's an honor to do that. And I love them, God. No, Lord, I'm not perfect. But God, I want to do your will. God, I want to be everything you want me to be. God, you know with everything in me, God, that I'm not afraid of this sickness. But Lord, I don't want to die and go to a devil's hell. And I don't want no one else to I go to a devil's hell. That's why that us pastors are on here. That's why that us pastors today are preaching to you live. Are preaching to you in an empty church. That's why the pastors are crying out to you. Amen. And they're looking around and not a soul to look back at them. But yet they're crying out to you because they love you. They want to tell you that Jesus loves you. Oh. See, you can't just praise God when you're comfortable. Oh, no. So you got to be able to praise God even when you're out of your comfort zone. Even when you got people around and they think that you're crazy, you keep praising God. You got to keep praising Him. You praise God even at home. And you, you know what? We, we ought to be able to praise God even just as much at home as what we do in the church house. You got to praise God in the bad times and as well as the good times. See, if you go over in the book of Acts, and I believe it's about the chapter 16, Paul and Silas, amen. Paul and Silas, no doubt, they were out of their comfort zone, amen. But even in the midnight hour, in the middle of their prison, the Bible says that they prayed and sang praises unto God. You can't just praise God in a church. You got you better be able to praise God in the middle of your prison. You see, they knew that God was worthy. They knew that no matter their situation, God is still God. It doesn't matter. God can take the things that was meant for bad and turn them around for the good. God deserves all praise. If you want to be free from your prison, then praise God with all your heart. Praise Him in the middle of your prison. See, some of you out there right now, some of you out there and you're in a prison. Some of you are in a prison and maybe you're, you're dealing with the prison of your past. Maybe it's a prison of addiction. 
Maybe it's a prison of depression or a prison of anxiety. Whatever the case is, you've locked yourself up in a prison and you're trying to find every way you can to get out of it only to find that you're stuck in the middle of that prison with nowhere to go, no one to turn to. You can't seem to even catch a break. But I want to let you know something. The key has been handed to you and His name is Jesus. All you've got to do is like Paul and Silas did and praise Him in the midnight hour. Hallelujah. If you'll praise God in the middle in your prison, you'll see Jesus show up. You'll see Him open the cell doors and you'll walk away. Hallelujah. See, you've got to praise God. God wants people that truly love Him. God wants people that want to serve Him with all their heart. God wants people that's got their mind made up that no matter well hell or high water, no matter what may come my way, I'm still going to praise His name. See, that's what God's looking for. Because if you can't praise Him now, how are you going to praise Him when things get worse? How are you going to be able to do that? See, this ought to be a reality check. God, I believe God allowed this stuff to happen so that He would hopefully wake up people's eyes. That He would wake them up and say, Hey, you got it all wrong. You need Jesus. See, God is trying to wake you up. Just like the five foolish virgins. They slumbered and they slept. But then the bridegroom came, hallelujah. And they found that they didn't have no oil in their lamps, hallelujah. See, there's people that go to church. There's people that claim to be Christians that carry their Bibles. But yet they don't have, they don't have the oil inside. They don't have Jesus. They don't have the Word. They don't have the blood. That's the difference, church. It's not about how you look. It's not about how well you dress. It's not about how good you sing or how well you preach. It's not about how high you jump or how loud you shout. It's how straight you walk when your feet hit the ground. It's about who lives inside. It's about who lives inside, hallelujah. There's old, a song that I kind of conjured up in my head when I was a little boy. We, I, I kind of... We, we had this cartoon we watched. Said my mama don't allow no music played in here. But, you know, I got to thinking about it. And I said, well, this devil don't allow no music played in here. The devil don't allow no praising in here. But I don't care what the devil don't allow. I'll praise my Jesus anyhow. I'm going to praise my Jesus in here. See, it doesn't matter what people think about me. Amen. It don't matter what people think about you. Hallelujah. See, the Bible tells us not to fear man that can destroy the body. But fear the one who can destroy both body and soul into the lake of fire. Amen. You have to... You, you have You've got to look to God. You have got to trust God and quit worrying about pleasing people and start worrying about pleasing God. You can't please God by having fear all the time. You can't do it because you got fear, then you've got doubt and no faith. But the Bible tells me that if I have faith as a grain of mustard seed, I can look at a mountain and say, be removed, and it's going to go. If I have faith as a mustard seed church, I can look at any devil, no matter how big or how small, and command it to go, and he's got to go. You can look at a devil and command him to go, and he's got to flee. You know what, church? If you'll use that mustard seed, amen, you can move mountains. If you can use that mustard seed, you can heal the sick. If you can use that mustard seed, but you got to find it, hallelujah. See, I'm going to praise God because He didn't bring me this far to leave me now. He didn't bring me this far to leave me. God has brought me through some really tough situations, amen. God has brought you through some really tough times. Well, guess what? He's still the same God, and if He did it then, He can do it again, praise God, hallelujah. But we're so worried about fear. Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 10. It tells us, says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. We don't need to fear nothing. We don't need to fear a thing. Because Jesus is with us. He made you. He loves you, church. He knows what you're going through. The woman with the issue of blood, no doubt she was ready to give up 
But then something kept her going. Something told her you got to keep going. Something told her don't be afraid. You need to get to Jesus. Hallelujah. No doubt the woman was nervous, but yet she overcame her fear. That's, that's the thing, church. You've got to overcome your fear. If the woman hadn't overcame her fear, she wouldn't have found her healing. She wouldn't have made her way to Jesus. She wouldn't have touched the hem of His garment. But because she overcame her fear, you've got to overcome your fear. Don't worry about what's going on in the world. What is your soul like? That's what you need. That's what you need. I know that things are tough. I know that things are hard. But you know what? God is more than able. God is more than able. He loves you. I'm going to ask, if you're out there, if you just bow your heads, I want us to pray. See, I believe that, that God is speaking to someone out there today. Maybe that someone is you. Maybe you've been searching for an answer to all the chaos and to all the turmoil that's going on in this world. And maybe there's chaos and turmoil that's going on within you. Fear's crept in and it's stolen your peace. And it's robbed you of your joy. Maybe your friends have forsaken you. And you feel all alone. But just know that Jesus is right by your side. And He's saying, fear not. Maybe your money is gone. And all your bills are due. And Jesus is saying, fear not. I'm more than able. He shall supply all our need according to His riches and glory. When the world seems to have fallen apart, fear not. When your enemies are many and your friends are few, fear not. When your up is down and your town is up, fear not. When you have more valleys than you do mountaintops, fear not. Oh, church, fear not. David said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for His name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For Thou art with me. Thy rod and Thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. You see, God loves you. God don't want you to fear the sickness. He wants you to trust Him, church. He wants you to reach out, just reach out and say, God, I'm so weak, but with what strength I have left, Lord, I'm holding on. Lord, I'm going to praise you, God, even when I don't feel like it. I thank you. I thank you, Lord, for my family, God, I thank you. I thank you for the trials, God, that you have sent my way to help me to grow. To help make me stronger. Lord, forgive us, God, for all the times that we have sinned, for all our failures and our faults. Lord, we come to you not as people, but as your children. We beg you, oh God. Lord, I thank you so much. You are so worthy, and I praise you. I thank you, Lord, because I can't do a thing without you, Father. I thank you for our church. I thank you for our members. Oh, God, we're just so blessed. I know, God, that you will supply all of our needs. And I thank you for being God, for sending your own son to die for us, your only son. I thank you. I thank you, Lord, for the love that you have for us and the mercy that you show us. I thank you, Father.
Father. You are so worthy. Lord, I just let to feel your Holy Spirit. If there be any lost out there that's watching, God, please speak to them that they may turn their hearts over to you before it's too late. Lord, I don't claim to be a great preacher. I just want to get your word out there, God. I just want you to use me, God, the way that you see fit. Oh, Lord, I need you, Father. I can't do it without you, Lord, and I need you. Lord, just help the people. Help us all to stand strong. Help us all, God, to look to you. Help us all to trust you, God. Because, God, you're all we have. There's some out there that has lost their spouse. There's some out there that's lost their children. And, Father, they, they're, they're living alone and don't have no one to turn to. God, I pray that you would fill that void with your Holy Spirit. That they would feel your arms wrap around them, oh, God. Lord, I thank you so much, Lord. Lord, I'm humbled by your Holy Spirit and your presence, oh, Father. Lord, you're so good to us, God. You're so good. You're better to us than what we could ever deserve, God. And I thank you. I thank you, God, that you don't love one more than the other. I thank you, Father, that you love us so unconditionally. I lift you up and I thank you for our church family. I thank you, Lord, for those, Lord, that have come to know you, those that are praying for us, God. I thank you, Father, for those, Lord, that are lifting us up in prayer. I praise you, God. And all these things we ask, Lord, in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus, and we praise you. We thank you for giving us this opportunity. In your Son, Jesus' sweet, holy, and precious name, And everyone says, Amen. I hope that you all have enjoyed this service. I must say I have. I have truly felt the Lord. There's just something about when you can get along with God. I'm so overcome by His Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. God wants to do a great work with His church. He's so merciful, we don't even deserve it. He's given us a chance to get where we need to be. To get where we need to be with Him. He's given us a chance. He's given us a chance. I want to do one song before I dismiss. You see, I've truly felt the presence of God. I've truly felt His Holy Spirit here today. And I trust that you have felt His presence with you. <coughs> and church, if you have felt God, then that ought to let you know right there. God took the time to join you in your home today. That became the house of God. But I want to do this, this song. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, and with thanksgiving. I'll be a living sanctuary for you. It is you, Lord, who came to save the heart and soul of every man. It is you, Lord, who knows my weakness and gives me strength with thy own hand. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. Oh, listen, church. Leave me on.
Lord, prepare me. Oh, could you sing it with me? To be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. say I thank everyone for joining us in the service and I want you to know that uh, we uh, appreciate everyone appreciate all the prayers appreciate all the support uh, and on behalf I'm sure I speak with all the pastors you know we appreciate you very much for supporting us it's a very hard very difficult uh, decisions that we've had to make but it was for the it was for the best of your interest that we would keep you all safe. We're trying to protect the flock. And that's why we're here and, and doing this. And, and we're still trying to, to feed you the Word of God. We're still trying to uplift you. We're still trying to encourage you. Uh, I want to encourage each and every one. You know, we got, I have, a, like I said, I have a wonderful, wonderful uh, church, family, congregation. They, they get in there and they support me more than what I could ever deserve. I appreciate them so much. And and they they communicate with one another, you know, social media and stuff. And that, that's what I encourage everyone to do is to, you know, you might not be able to get out and, and go places and see face to face. But if you can get on social media and maybe Snapchat or FaceTime, whatever the case may be, you know, and, and be able to encourage one another and, and lift one another up in spirit and let them know, you know, hey, you know, we're going to get through this because God says so. You're not going through this by yourself. This is just a storm. This is just a trial. It's just a, it's just a, a time that's going to pass by and you're going to see that God is still in control and that God is taking care of you right this this very moment. God has got you in the palm of His hand. God ain't going to leave you. God ain't going to let you go. God's not going to let this thing destroy you. God don't have plans to destroy you with this. God loves you. I love you very, very much. You don't understand. No greater love than this than a man lay down his life for a friend. I love each and every one of you. Those that that maybe are not even our church members. I love you. I love you. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get with my senior deacon, and and maybe if they still this is going on Wednesday, then you know what? I think we ought to do a, a FaceTime live and have a Bible study. You know, and may I know it's gonna be out of his comfort zone too. And you know, I'd be right there to help him if need to be. That's not a problem. Uh, but I think, you know, we need to keep this going. We need to, we need to do this. We don't need to miss Bible study. We don't need to miss church. If this is still going on Sunday, well, guess what? Brother Nick will be right here and we will be doing this. Uh, we'll be doing a, a, a another service, but I, I just, again, I just want to thank you and I want to thank God for making this possible. I love him. I appreciate him. And for those of you that are out there and you're struggling, hold on because your victory is here. Your victory is just around the corner. Your joy cometh in the morning. Just look toward the hill from with cometh your help. Jesus is right there. And He'll never leave you. And He'll never forsake you. Let us bow our heads in a word of prayer. Dear most kind, precious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank You. I thank You, Father, for Your Holy Spirit and anointing that we have felt here this morning. I thank You for Your love. And I thank You, Father, that You're still here. You're still in control. And that God, that you're watching over us. 
You're protecting us. God, just lead God and direct us, Lord. Lead God and direct our footsteps and our eyes and our minds and our hearts. Father, help us to be stayed upon You, Lord. To not focus to the storm, but to focus upon You, Lord. That, Father, as long as we look to You, then we're safe. As long as we trust You, God, we'll be okay. Lord, You don't intend to destroy us, but You intend, you intend to help us, to bless us, to protect us. So God, this is not a trial. This, is, this trial is not here. To, it's not sent to destroy us. But this trial was sent here to help us, to make us stronger, to encourage us, to let us know that You are there, even outside of a church house. You are still there with us. And Father, I thank You for making it possible. And all these things, Lord, we ask You as, as we go our separate ways and throughout this week, Lord, the people that are without jobs, help them. Lord, be with our government. Lord, I pray that You be with our governor, that You be with our president and vice president. Be with our leaders. Lord, this is not a political party. This is not politics. But Lord, they have difficult decisions and they got responsibilities on their shoulders. And Lord, it's time they come together, Lord, for the benefit of the people and to seek Your face, God. Lord, I ask that You be with them, that You help them to make the right decisions. Watch over them, God, and protect them. I ask You, Father, to be with us all. In all these things we ask you and we pray in the mighty name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed. May God bless.